So I'm putting push pins into my the backs of my canvases, as I always do, to raise it off of the table. I have a fresh piece of butcher paper, which is listed in the link below under the Amazon link. I have suggested products there, and you might want to take a look at that for um, different supplies and things that I use. Today I'm going to do, I don't know, I think something a little bit different. I'm always wanting to try new things. Um, I keep all my colors mixed up. I always have a big bottle of white with Floetrol in it. This is what is in this. So I'm going to put a light coat of white mixed one on to one with Floetrol. And in the United States, it's flood Floetrol, latex based, and uh, there's also Oatrol, which is also a, a type of Floetrol that is in Europe, if you're not in the United States, you can order it online at Amazon. In the United States, you can find it Floetrol at Lowe's and Home Depot and places like that uh, that are, you know, typical large hardware paint stores all in one. And I'm going to let you watch the whole process today and you can fast forward through the areas that you don't want to watch. I'm trying to decide what colors I would like to use today. I always lean towards plenty of color. So today I'm going to get away from Deco Art for once and mix up some tube paints which are thicker, They're more of an artist grade paint and um, this is Liquitex Basics. You can usually get them for mm, four or five dollars, I think a tube. Um, they're four ounces, so it's equal to two bottles of craft paint. So they look like a lot more and on two, but you're getting two bottles worth. So keep that in mind. If you buy two bottles of two ounce craft paint, that's four ounces of paint, and you're spending maybe two dollars to three dollars at the most. So just keep that in mind. With these, you do have to add a lot more water. So that's deep violet. I'm going to use, this is cadmium red deep, another Liquitex Basics. There's that one. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to do this one. It is called Purple. And it's a lighter. It's not a deep purple. It's a light purple. not decided if I'm going to swipe. I know I'm going to pour in bands. Um, I have kind of envisioned in my head what I'm going to do, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to pull it off yet. This is Master's Touch, which I think comes from Hobby Lobby. It's four dollars for a tube. I want yellow. This is primary yellow. Uh, this is 
the fine touch, which is three dollars a bottle or a tube. I want an orange. This is Liquitex Basics. Five dollars from Hobby Lobby. There's the price tag. I generally get these when they're on sale because they are more expensive than your craft bottles. But the quality is better because it is an artist grade paint. Okay, so I've got those. I want I want a magenta color. I might use this. This is light magenta. I think I'm going to go with this one. This one is um, magenta quinacridone. I'm going to squeeze. And that was that's Liquitex Basics. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this light magenta in with that. Okay. So there's my colors. If you can see those there. Also I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Here are my colors, so I'm going to move the tubes. I've got my bottle of water. I've got my big jug of Floetrol. And some of these I have, you know, some I have more of than others. I'm going to mix these up and add a little water till they get to the creamy consistency where it pours off your stick like warm honey. So this part of the video I'm not going to talk so that I can mix without um, talking and then I can speed it up through this process. I do want to show you one of the mixed whoops get too happy and splash my water out. You have to kind of, when you put your water in, you have to kind of take it slow until it mixes in with that paint. And I like to always put my paint and Floetrol in together and mix that first where they have a chance to bind with each other and add the water at the end only if you need it to make it a little bit more fluid. So see, it's, it's not running off my stick, so then I need to add a little more water. But the two paints are generally going to be thicker than your acrylic bottle paints, like Deco Art and Folk Art and those kind of brands. And so you, uh, you have to add more to it to get it fluid. That's pretty good right there. So the rest of the video I am going to speed up, but you want it in a nice steady stream. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not. 
where it pours off your stick in a nice steady string. So I'm going to speed up the rest. Okay, so I, I added a little bit more of this color, which was the uh, deep violet, because I love that color and I wanted to have plenty of it just in case. That peller purple is probably my least favorite, so I have the, le the least amount of that. I have the least amount of yellow, because yellow, I don't want yellow to overtake it. I want it to have a... A glow about it and I think I'm gonna swipe and I think I'm gonna do the wet paper towel method but we shall see I was either gonna do the wet paper towel or use one of my scrapers to do it but I don't think I can control it as much that I'm not sure how I want to control it quite yet. So for now we're going to go ahead and move this white which has been sitting here this whole time and it takes it takes a while to mix up your paint. It is not a quick thing that sometimes takes as long if not longer than your whole painting does. So I just basically want a wet layer of white paint. This has no silicone in it. I just want my paint to be able to... I kind of like to have some white negative space on the sides, but I'm not sure how that will work out. I have a tendency to want to cover my canvas sometimes with color but I would kind of like to leave some negative space. Okay. And also too, I don't know if you saw, probably not because of the speed of the video when I was mixing, but um, some people say they get clumps in their flow trawl and they have to strain it and all that. And I have never had that problem. I have used flow trawl for many years. I was a decorative artist and I used it in place of glazing medium. And I put it in my wall paint and used it as a glaze. And I never, I have clumps sometimes. If you're stirring and you lift your, your stick up and there's like a strand of flow trawl, that is usually the problem I have and I'll just take it out of my paint but I don't usually have clumps or you know little lumps of flow trawl or anything like that it's usually in a strand where you can pull it out with your stick when you're mixing the color I think I'm gonna go this way with it uh, for a side-by-side -side kind of thing and um, I'm going to start with my yellow and typically I use squeeze bottles. I'm known to use the squeeze bottles and I didn't want to use squeeze bottles this time because I wanted kind of the not so perfect line of color.
and I can already tell you I forgot to do one thing was to add silicone. So no silicone in the yellow. I'm going to add, let's see, these cups are four ounces. So I'm going to add three or four drops to each cup. Okay, and I didn't stir it a whole lot. This is a pretty deep red. And um, I probably would have added more water to my paint, but I didn't really have the space in my cups. That's something to keep in mind when you're mixing paint, is if you want four ounces of fluid paint, then you need to probably limit your ounces to one or two ounces of color to add your flow troll to and then you're going to add you know maybe 20 percent of water or something like that but it gets to the point where it's so full at, at the top of the uh, the cup that you can't stir it real well so like I said I probably wanted my colors a little bit wet more wet but I kind of ran out of room to add water without making the cup over, overflow. And I'm not using all the color in the cups. I'm leaving a little bit of each one.
initially I was thinking I might want to swipe with this color because I, like, I think it would look good over all these colors but um, I'm not sure I'm trying to decide what to do. Okay, I have black in a bottle here. It's mixed 50-50 with Floetrol, no silicone, silicone, no silicone. These are 12 by 16 canvases, so this is the width of 12 inches. So I want to make sure my paper towel is wide enough. It is. So I'm going to lay it down and let it make contact with that black. That stayed pretty even, so I'm going to do the same thing. Lay it down in that layer of black and let it, let it rest. And then drag. So I ended up doing something that I wasn't totally planning on doing. I'm hoping it turns out well. I'm going to get my heat gun and put it on the canvases. So it's interesting that I had white underneath everything and so here where I had the purple the white actually drug and I maybe I didn't put enough black but it drug the white from the underneath into it with the black which is fine it just adds to the interest I think of the painting um, I love this part here and I'm curious to see 
if this is just going to all be in the purple tones, which I think it is, and this is just going to be the lighter area down here because I had so much paint and it was so thick. So that's one, one thing that maybe if you're attempting to do this, you might want to water your paints down a little bit more than I did. I ran out of space in my four ounce cups. So I put too much paint and Floetrol in and didn't leave myself enough room to add enough water. They st it was still creamy and ran off my stick, but it was kind of like thick honey. And I might would have been more successful with this if I had let it be a little more watery. Um, I still love these colors, so I'm not unhappy with this at all. So basically, I'm just going to check the sides. To make sure there's paint. I love what I'm even seeing on my table too. So whenever you're touching up your sides, you want to try to get the paint that looks the most like where there's wet, you know, open spots that need color. Like I'm not going to try to put purple down here. I'm going to put the yellow and orange because near the bottom of the painting, that's what colors I have. This is so beautiful down here. On this end, I just want to make sure there's mostly black, but there is some purple too. So I just want to make sure I have that on the ends of my canvases. So pretty much everything is covered. I'm not going to mess with it too much more because I don't want to upset what's going on. So, I'm going to get these out of the way. It's also given me an idea for something else I want to try now. But, I love, I love this down here. I want to somehow create that again. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. And I can tell there's going to be more that's popping up as this dries because like this has changed already so much and I think this will too. So if I'm getting more of the purple stuff, that's going to be really cool. I just wish it had more of this going on up here. But, um, and I may even see so just tilting it a little bit. stretches the cells too. But, um, see it kind of stops here where the paint is thin. So 
I don't want to screw that up either. But it was it's you know it shows more of this down here, which I love. So I'm gonna stop here, and then you may see a follow-up with if I have some a smaller canvas, I may still do something else with these colors because I love it so much. So here's the first one. That's the area that I love so much there. Here is the second one. So we shall see how it dries. I will post dry pictures at the end of the video.